sound up. All right. Uh, good evening. My name is Carl Lukings, and I am here at uh, Horizon Solutions. Uh, and tonight is our resource stage for March 2021. I had to, uh, to think about this a little bit today that March 2020 was the last time that we had people in this room to do a resource stage seminar. And it's, it's a little sad that we don't have people here. I'd really wish that we would have been able to have people, uh, you know, one year later after the pandemic started. But I remember on that night standing right here and talking about, uh, talking about streaming. And we talked about uh, how streaming worked. And we were talking about how, uh, you know, we figured that probably more and more of our clients, churches and schools and theaters were going to need to be getting into streaming more and more. Uh, so tonight we are going to um, talk about streaming some more. We have spent the last 12 months working with a lot of people streaming their projects. Um, and some people have uh, kind of found their own way, figured out different things. Some people have called us and asked us, you know, for any information that we can give them. And uh, we're kind of finding a lot of people who they try this and they try that and then they give us a call and then maybe come back to us a little bit later, that kind of thing. Uh, we're also finding that a lot of the schools that we work with and a lot of the theaters that we work with are needing to get into streaming more than what they did in the past. So uh, tonight we figured that we would talk a little bit about kind of how a system goes together for streaming. So in the past we've talked about kind of big broad stroke sort of stuff. Tonight we have a bunch of equipment and we're going to talk about how these pieces fit together and how you might put together a streaming system and, and how we've done this for a lot of different groups. This is something that, uh, that you can purchase. This is something that you can rent. This is something that you can purchase and rent if you need to. Um, and certainly you don't have to go with the pieces that we're talking about here tonight, but we're, we are going to be talking about some specific pieces that, uh, that I think you'll find interesting and that we've had a lot of really good success with. So uh, we're going to jump right into it. Um, so the first thing for any video streaming project would be, of course, to be able to capture video. So uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is a camera. Uh, this is a pretty standard camera. This is a Canon camera that we've had in rentals for a number of years. It's a 1080p camera. Uh, it happens to be the XA25, but there are a number of different kind of versions of this camera that are out there. XA25, XA11 is a current model of this. Um, and uh, we also have what I'm looking into right now is an XA50, which is a 4K version of this camera. Uh, one of the things that's kind of cool about a camera like this is that it has a good zoom on it. It's got a 20 times zoom, but it also has multiple outputs. So it has HDMI and SDI outputs. And this is important for a streaming system because it gives us some flexibility and options on how we get the video out of that camera. It also has a couple of XLR inputs for audio input coming from either a microphone or a couple of microphones or from a sound console. So uh, this is, in, in some church situations, in some theater situations, we've had people take a camera like this, have a couple of inputs, one or two mic inputs directly into the camera, and then they've recorded onto the SD cards into the side of the camera, recorded their service, recorded their event, and then taken that and then uploaded that to YouTube or Facebook or whatever platform they're working with. And that can work very well. Being able to embed the audio and the video all in one spot can work great. The next step from that is sometimes people will take a camera like this, they will have the audio come from, again, their mixer or microphones, uh, and then come out of that and then capture that into a computer. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later on as we get through things. But for starters, we're going to come out of this camera and we're going to come out with SDI. Now, SDI is an interesting uh, digital protocol. Looks kind of like this. It's a BNC connector and it is just one cable. It's nice and flexible. You can go very long distances with it. And for a lot of things, uh, cameras being one of them, it's better than HDMI. We will typically not use SDI at Horizon for going to projectors or displays. We can talk about that another time, but for cameras, we use SDI very regularly. So we come out of the camera with SDI. Now, we're gonna talk about HDMI cameras a little bit later on, but we'll get there. So 
coming out of that camera with SDI. I'm going to move this guy out of the way a little bit. And now that cable is coming over here and we're going to come into a small video switcher. So this video switcher here, I'm actually, uh, this is the Roland V1 SDI. It is a four input switcher, really nice, nice and small and compact, works really great. Uh, let's see here, I'm going to take input number one, feed that into my video switcher. Immediately it comes up there. So you can see that's this camera over here. That's co coming in and I've got a preview with this. So I have a preview monitor that can show me what's going on on all of my inputs for this video switcher, which is pretty helpful. So uh, let's see here, maybe actually what I'll do is I can spin this around and we can use that and you can see kind of how, how that works. All right, so one input down. Now, we also have a lot of clients who are wanting to be able to remote control their cameras. And they might have a camera that is really close to the platform uh, uh, or really close to the stage or it might be on stage or you know, the, in sports, this kind of camera is really big because they can put it into different areas. So uh, baseball, in baseball, they're putting cameras like this right in the dugout so that the camera can get really close shots of what's happening in the dugout and the, it's, it's not interrupting what's happening. In hockey, this is often a camera like this is, is landing uh, often right above, say, the penalty, penalty box, that sort of thing. The camera can move back and forth. Now, this is not of that quality. I mean, let's be honest. This, this is about a $2,500 camera. The cameras that you're talking about for broadcast are a little different than that. But this PTZ camera, this one is uh, specifically from PTZ Optics, one of the brands that we sell. And this camera has, again, an output, an HDMI output, and a couple of other things. One of the most important things that we like about this camera is that the connection on the back right here is a network connection. That network connection is a PoE connection, so it allows us to be able to connect the camera over network for both control and power. Now I actually have another one of these cameras just set up off camera and it's sitting over here. That camera is just connected into a little network switch that we have sitting on the table right there. Just a compact little network switch. I think it's worth about 80 bucks and it's a PoE enabled network switch. So camera over here, network cable going to there, SDI output again coming there and that SDI output is going to go into input number two on our video switcher. And as soon as I plug that in, we've got that guy over here. So now we have two different inputs. Uh, I would like to be able to see what my output is coming out. You know what? I think we're going to have to deal with that in a couple of minutes. But I can see I've got input number one, this camera over here. Input number two, this camera over here. But I want to be able to control that camera. And, uh, you know, for this camera, I can use a person. I can have somebody there angle that camera where it needs to go. But this camera, again, I want to put it somewhere uh, where I maybe don't have a person or I might have a bunch of these cameras all over my space and I want to be able to control them. Well, a controller like this one is a great way to do that. So actually, I'm going to use the controller to highlight the controller. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on camera number one and I'm going to click preset number one. And let's see here. Oh, that didn't do what I wanted. There we go. Preset number two. So that focuses in just on that area. Now, let's see here. I can then also hit preset number three. And if you, I'm not sure if you can see that. Hopefully you can see that there. It's zooming in onto that specific area. We'll go back to number two. This controller is a simple little controller with a joystick on it where I can move around the camera to where I want it to go. And that too is connected with PoE and it is just giving me the ability to switch back and forth between different presets. I'll hear actually, I'm gonna, uh, if we can switch back to that camera again, great. So I can actually move that around to where I want it to go depending on how far I push the joystick will depend on will determine how quickly or how slowly it goes. And I can slowly move it down, slowly. Is it moving? There we go. Or I can move it really quickly. 
Okay, and we've actually got this, pre, uh, this camera turned down so it's not going to move very quickly. So that is the joystick controller. Again, just connected with a network cable. So if you come back, I know I'm talking pretty quickly here, but if you come back, we've got one camera connected with SDI into the switcher. Just one cable and power. The other camera we've got connected with SDI into the switcher and all of its control and power is done through Cat5, through a network connection. All right, so those two components are pretty big deal. Now let's come back to our switcher here. Uh, we'd like to put in a third camera. Now, some people can't necessarily afford a camera that's, that's worth you know, a minimum of $1,600, a maximum of whatever it is you wanna pay. Some people want to be able to just use a little camera like this. This is a small little Canon handy cam sort of a thing. It's relatively inexpensive, but it gives you a half decent uh, image. So let's see here, I'm gonna turn this guy on. It's got, hopefully he's got enough battery power for tonight. Oh, it says change the battery pack. All right, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna have to plug that in. So I'm gonna plug them in right there. Okay, now I wanna get a line from there into here. Now this little camera is a HDMI output. Now I know I've got a cable here somewhere, there we go. This is a micro HDMI, a small HDMI, and it goes to a full size HDMI, if you can see that. So I can take the output of this and I can run that over here and I can run that into the HDMI input and it automatically comes up and there we go. So now I have three cameras into this system, two with SDI and one with HDMI, okay? Now, that's pretty cool, but we do have some clients and especially in community theaters and in schools who want to be able to have somebody roaming around with the camera. It's a really nice thing to be able to do if you can do it. Well, uh, let's see if we can figure out the best way to do that. So first of all, I need some way of transmitting the HDMI signal wirelessly. Now, this is actually a little bit of an older model, maybe a year or two old now. And uh, this is from a company called uh, Hollyland, but they, they still build these, but also uh, another company called Teradact. And this has HDMI input and SDI input, and it wirelessly transmits the HDMI with, they claim, one, less than one frame loss. So this is pretty cool, and it actually works really, really well. I'm gonna pull the HDMI back out of the switcher here and plug it directly into the transmitter, and I'm gonna turn on the transmitter. Now I need a receiver still, so I will grab my corresponding re receiver. I'm going to plug that in over here. Okay, so there's the receiver. And in a second, it should show that it's uh, getting some video signal. There we go. It's, it sees the transmitter, so it goes green. And now I'm going to plug in an SDI output out of that. So I'm actually going from HDMI on this little camera to SDI output out of there. And I'm gonna take that SDI output and go into my, into my switcher. So now, as I'm moving this around, look at that. I'm completely wireless, other than in this case, my battery's a little bit dead, so I've got to, I've got to plug into there. But with a, with a good battery and with the uh, wireless, I can move that around. And that can work with pretty much any HDMI source. So you can use that for, well, any HDMI source. Um, with the exception of, and we're not gonna get into this discussion tonight, but with the exception of things like Blu-ray players and DVD players that have HDCP copyright protection, you're not gonna be able to do wireless with that. But that's another, another topic for another night. So I've got a couple of different options there. Wired with SDI for a stationary camera that can be operated by a, uh, a technician or you can go to a PTZ camera that can be operated by an operator with the controller. Okay, and we can, let's see if we've got a wider angle shot there. There we go, that's a little bit better. So I've got these different inputs. Now, um, from here, 
one of the things that is really important for a lot of our, our, lot of our clients and almost every event that we do is the ability to have a computer input come in as well. So for the computer input, I have my computer sitting over here. I have a presentation up on it and I've got an HDMI connection coming out of that. So my HDMI, let's see here, that would be this cable right here. And I'm gonna go HDMI in. It's gonna flicker and flash for a second as it's just trying to figure out what resolution it's supposed to be. And then I'm gonna restart my presentation now that it knows that there's a second monitor. And there we go. So I now have four inputs. Two of them are wired SDI. One of them is wireless HDMI converted to SDI and back. It can be, it, there's no reason it couldn't be wireless HDMI to wireless HDMI. There's no reason for that. And then there we are with presentation uh, coming up there as well. You can also see that I've got all kinds of audio input coming here. If you can see that close there, maybe what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll use this guy. I'll zoom in a little bit. There we go. All right, and you can see that there's lots of activity if we switch to that camera, to the BTZ camera. Then you can see there's all kinds of activity on those audio inputs coming in. So one of the confusions sometimes is sometimes people think about uh, uh, an SDI cable and they think about going back to old coax cable from way back when. And uh, this is not old coax cable. This is sending... Uh, a high definition signal. This is a 3G SDI, so that means it's 1080p, and it's sending uh, full audio as well embedded down there, which means that we are getting audio coming in on the different sources. In this case, we're not getting audio from the PTZ camera, but we are getting audio from this camera and this camera. Okay, all right. So we have all of our inputs. Now let's talk about outputs. So, you know, the easiest way to get output is if I just take a HDMI out. This video switcher, there's lots of different switchers that we sell, but this one in particular is the V1 SDI, and the V1 SDI only has SDI output for its main output. It does have HDMI out for the preview, but it's only SDI for the main out. So if you've been wondering what this display is up here and why it's at no signal, well, that's because I want to have that to be my main output. So let's see here. I have a little converter. This converter is made by a company called Decimator. Decimator is out of the UK. And uh, actually, that's not true. Sorry, Decimator is out of Australia, I believe, and they, we buy them out of uh, the UK. And uh, you'll find on the internet in different places that there's these little gray boxes that do SDI to HDMI or other ones that do HDMI to SDI and they're really inexpensive. Uh, we prefer the red ones uh, for a couple of different reasons. Uh, one, we find them to be quite reliable. But the other thing is, is that this is kind of a neat box because it's HDMI input and SDI output and SDI input and HDMI output in the same box. So you can go SDI to HDMI or HDMI to SDI all in one box. This is the MDLX. So it just sends through the signal. All it does is switch it from SDI to HDMI or HDMI to SDI. Um, but you can also use it in kind of an, another interesting way. So I, first of all, I'm gonna plug in the red power cable here. They make that easy and it being red. And I need an SDI cable to come out of the output, so just a little one here, come out of the output of the program output, and oh, just messing with my BNC here, there we go. All right, and that goes into the input of this converter. So this TV up here, I know that it is HDMI input, so let's see, I'm gonna take that one there, plug that into the HDMI output, and that's gonna take a second, and hopefully that comes up quickly, there we go. And now we can see what we've got coming out, and that would be what's going out to wherever I'm sending it. So that could be where I'm going to send it to the internet for streaming, it could be, I could be using this switcher for sending video around my school to a bunch of TVs or something, it could be a variety of different things. It could be going to a recorder. 
So that's what's going there. And now, now that I can see that, then I can see, okay, well, let's switch between these inputs. There we go. Wow, and the cameras look completely overdriven on here. And then if I want to preview, I can go click on the green. Now I can switch over to this camera. And if I want to switch to the computer, I can go here. I'm setting it up on this level, on the B level, in the preview level. And then when I hit auto, then it switches to that. Okay. So I can switch back and forth between these different inputs and go back and forth. Okay. So pretty simple so far. Inputs coming in, output going out, preview monitor going out, and I'm able to see what's going on. Now, uh, as much as this is great, and this is really helpful, I think that I need to be able to actually get it out because right now I'm only going out to the monitor. I need to be able to get out to streaming. So uh, we have had a lot of success with this box. And maybe what I'll do is I will show this right on this camera right here if we can switch to this, uh, to this camera. This is the NVS34 from Data Video. And we actually sold quite a few of the previous version of this, the NVS33, um, but we sold even more of the 34. And this box is really helpful because as a streaming device, it allows us to set everything up to stream from YouTube or uh, to Facebook, to Vimeo, to many other platforms, and get it to the point where you just hit that streaming button, you hold it down, and it will start sending your signal out. And we've got lots of different clients who say, well, you know what, I'm just going to go to a computer, and that's fine. But the advantage to this is that this device doesn't need to worry about uh, whether there was a Windows update last night, or whether or not there was an, a software update or something like that. This box is what it is. It doesn't really change. It's, it's pretty handy. Is it perfect? You know what? When it comes to streaming, uh, we've, we've quickly found out there's nothing that's perfect, uh, but it works extremely well. The other thing that you'll notice on here is this button called record, and that does exactly what you expect. And when you hold down the record button, it'll start flashing for a minute, and then it'll start recording onto an SD card. Now, we have had a lot of success with, uh, with people using these to record. This is currently our favorite SD card. Uh, this is the one that seems to be working on most of these devices. And as much as I'm holding this up and it's maybe going a little bit fuzzy as I keep moving around with the autofocus, um, if you would like to find out more about this or find out what the exact model of this is, let us know and we can help you find that. It's only about 20 bucks for a 64 gig card. Uh, so it's pretty easy. So when you throw that into here, hold down that record button, then you're good to go. Uh, there's a really interesting button on here that we have never used with any of our clients, and that is this vertical button. So this is the whole idea that if you are streaming to somewhere like uh, TikTok or you're streaming to Facebook and you want to start, try doing a stream in vertical, then this box will flip the image for you and do that. It's pretty cool. Okay, switching back to the other camera here, we'll show where this fits into the mix. So if we, uh, if we can come back to the main camera, please. Thank you. So let's see, we've got to power this guy up, same as the other stuff. And now we need an output coming out of that. So we're going to use SDI. The NVS34 has both HDMI and SDI, but in this case, this is kind of handy because our little red box, this converter from Decimator, gives us the ability to take an SDI out of it. So Again, I've got SDI coming into it, SDI coming back out of it, and into the NVS34. So now I'm pretty much ready to go. Now I have multiple cameras with different angles. I have the ability to move my cameras where I want them to go and kind of get them into place, recall some presets where I want to, and I have a camera that can be wireless and can roam around. I also have my computer input, so I can switch, switch to that. And I have the ability to stream and go out. So that's great. That can work really, really well. However, 
I, I'm, I'm kind of forgetting something, and that is the audio. So I did mention that you can see the audio coming into the mixer over here, but that's coming in from all the cameras. And often that's not really what I want, especially if what I'm doing is uh, if I have a musical on stage with a number of, of singers, a number of uh, students maybe singing, or if I'm in a church and there's a group of people uh, doing different things, then I probably want to be able to take the audio off of my mixer and feed that into the switcher. So that's where we use a box like this. Now, some people will look at this and say, wow, that's a really expensive device for what you need to do. Uh, we kind of beg to differ. Uh, this is a box by Radial Engineering. Radial is a company out of, uh, uh, out of BC. And this is a Canadian built product. And it is b built to be driven over by a car. Uh, or maybe it's Canadian, so maybe a snowmobile or something. Um, and they're pretty awesome. And with this device, what we're doing is we can actually take the balanced audio inputs. So we've got a couple of XLRs there. We can take the balanced audio inputs coming from our, uh, from our mixer, and then it comes out of that with an unbalanced, isolated output. So if we have a buzz in our sound system, or if we have a different power supply for our video system, which is often the case, then this provides us some isolation so that we're not getting that buzz and we're not getting a, a funny electrical uh, loop between those two devices, um, or between those two systems, the audio system and the, and the video system. So in this case, I'm taking quarter inch outputs out of the Pro ISO box, and I'm going to put that into the video switcher. Now, I'm actually not doing a whole lot with that tonight other than showing you other than showing you how that would work, but the general idea is pretty simple. You take an output out of your sound console and go into your video console. Now, this is a good time to just take a second and talk about video for or sorry, audio for streaming. Um, we have been talking to people about streaming since about 2013. And some of those streams have worked really, really well, and some of those streams haven't worked so well, and people have learned, and we've learned, and we've all kind of grown. Um, in the last year, we've been doing a ton of this kind of stuff, and some of the people, some of the groups that we would often work with, where they would say, you know what, our internet just isn't good enough to stream, they've been forced to try to make this work, whether you're a small country church, or maybe you're a, uh, somebody who's working from home, and you're trying to, trying to meet with other people and you have really not awesome internet. This is one of the things that we've learned to be, to be very true about this. Um, not everybody's necessarily gonna agree with me on this, but this seems to ring true with most situations. And that is that most people will put up with not great video if the audio is awesome. So, or if the audio is good, then they're going to put up with a little bit more pixelation in their video, or maybe it's a little bit more grainy, or maybe it doesn't look quite as great as what you would like it to. I highly recommend that you really spend a fair amount of time thinking about how do you get your audio into your video stream? How are you going to make that work? And there's a lot of different ways of doing that. Sometimes, we've talked about this in other seminars, um, we've talked about this when we sat down and talked to different pastors at different churches in some of the previous videos that we've done that you can find on YouTube and Facebook. And this idea of, do you have a completely separate mixer with somebody mixing the sound completely separately? Or do you have somebody who's working on the same mixer mixing it separately? Or do you simply have one person who's trying to mix both? We've seen success in all three of those different scenarios but it takes some time, it takes some practice, and it takes effort, it's not just going to happen. Okay, so audio coming from your mixer, going into your video switcher. Cameras, computer, audio. Now we're going to, to the streaming device. We've set that all up. I'm not really talking about how to set that up tonight, but that can, uh, that's not ridiculously difficult. And then you come out of there with an ethernet connection, to your, to your network to go to the internet, all right? So that's pretty good, that's pretty simple. We have a pretty good system put in place 
if you're wanting to do some streaming. So I'm going to just show you a couple of things of what we've learned about uh, different things that can um, kind of make this work really nicely. First of all, coming back to the switcher, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to recall a preset that will take me to the switcher. I think this guy will take me close. Not bad. Now I'm going to just zoom that in a little bit. There we go. That's not bad. Okay. So, um, again, I have bus A and bus B. Bus A is what's going out live right now. So as I switch those, then that's what's going to be switching and that's what's going to be streaming. Now, it's important to realize that sometimes people think that green is go and red is stop, I guess. I <laughs> in this case, in video, we're always thinking of red as record is a good way of doing it and green is what is going to be going next. So if we look at that, then anything, if I switch from red, then that's going to be a snap and it's going to quickly switch to those. If I set it up and set up to go to green, then when I hit the auto button, then it's going to mix. Now, let's see here. I'm just going to move this camera out a little bit so that you can actually see this a little bit better with the preview monitor. So you can see here that whatever, I, whatever button I am on down here, that is going to be highlighted in green. And whatever is going out is going to be highlighted in red. So that way you know whether or not something is heading out to the internet right now or heading to your recording right now or whether it's what you're going to be going to next. So let's see here. If I want to switch to camera number two, I get my position set. I get that all set up. So it's going to go to this when I hit auto. I hit auto. And there we go. Now I've switched to that and that's what's going out. If I want to go to camera number three, I get that ready. I switch to that and well, there we go. I'm on camera number three. And again, if I want to go to my computer, then I set that up and I, and I go. So I've got a couple of different ways that I can switch between things. Okay. Now, one of the things that we do with a lot of people, if we can go back to the main camera here, one of the things we do with a lot of people is uh, we've got a lot of clients who want to be able to do that bottom third sort of a thing. And we, we've been doing that tonight. Um, that's referred to as the downstream key. And so actually, if we can go ahead and bring up just any random downstream key if that, uh, that's queued up there. Just go ahead and hit that DSK button again. Perfect. There we go. So you can see that this text is kind of floating over top and it kind of makes things look a little bit more professional. We'll go ahead and we'll take that off again now. So how do you do that on a small little switcher like this? Well, I'm going to go to my computer here. And if you take a look at my computer input, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring my computer input up to here. You can see that it's just a blue background with a nice bar across, across it. Um, we've set this up so that the, the downstream key is using that input as its as its input for the downstream keying. And uh, you may have heard of chroma key or green screen, that kind of thing. Well, blue is also a very common uh, color used for this kind of thing. Very much for weatherman and that, that kind of thing. Same sort of idea as green screen. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and switch to this camera and I'm going to bring that up by going to the DSK button. I'll hit that DSK button. And now you can see it brings that, brings that up along the bottom. Within the menu system of this uh, little switcher, I have the ability to set it up and say it's a green screen or it's a blue screen or if I'm using a Luma key in black or white. And then I can decide how, uh, how blue is the color that we need to get rid of, how green is that green color, what color of chroma is it that we're going to use. So I can set that and then with the click of a button, I can bring that in and bring it out. So it's, it's pretty nice to be able to have some titling across the bottom. Downstream keying is really nice if you're wanting to be able to put titling, but it's also really good for other things. Like for instance, if you need to put up a notification, like, I don't know, if you're doing something maybe in a, 
in a theater application, you need to tell somebody that their lights are on. You could use it that way. Um, but you can also use it in some situations where, say you're doing uh, some sort of uh, hearing, Im hearing impaired sort of uh, assistance, then you can do some neat things with that. Or uh, we've got some clients who've used that for, for opera applications where they're using it as, actually as a translation. So there's, there's some neat things that you can do there. So that's the downstream keying function, and that's a pretty standard function on any of the switchers that we sell, or almost any of the switchers that we sell. There are some other things that are really neat about this, but that kind of gives you the, uh, the general gist of, of that and what some of the things that most of our clients are using. Oh, I guess I'll show you one more. Um, if I hit, if I come over here and I hit uh, the, oh, sorry, the split button, then I can, oh, Oh no, I've got that switched. I better not get into that right now. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so far we have our cameras in, we've got our computer in, and we've got a streaming box, and we've got our SD card, and now from there I'm able to record and stream. Now, one of the things that a lot of people are wanting to do these days is they want to be able to up their game when it comes to doing a Zoom call or if they're wanting to do a Teams meeting or Duo or Google Meets or whatever it is. So there's absolutely no reason that you can't take this exact same system and instead of using a box like this, you now are going into your Teams computer or your Zoom computer. This is also a great way of, of capturing things if you are not going to use a device like this, an NVS34, or if you wanted to say potentially go to a software package. So if you wanted to go to something like OBS or if you wanted to go to, um, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of them out there, a whole, a whole whack of them. Um, OBS is a common one because it's free. A lot of people like to try to, try to use that one. So I have a device here. This is a company called Epifan Video. They are actually a Canadian company and they build this box called the AVIO 4K. Uh, it is a professional USB capture device, so HDMI to USB. I say professional because you can buy HDMI to USB can, uh, adapters out there for relatively inexpensive. This is not one of them. This, is a, this falls in the category of you get what you pay for. This is a, a high quality unit with heat sink and everything and it will do 4K capture. It's a different animal than some of the ones that you might find online. Uh, so I'm gonna plug that into my computer that I have over here, and I'm now going to take a, uh, let's see, I'm gonna take the HDMI output. Now, how am I going to do that? I've got another HDMI coming out here. I actually have a splitter that's splitting out on the floor there. So when I plug that into there, it's going to think about it for a second. All right. And now, if you can see that, maybe the thing for me to do is to jump back over here to my camera. If we can switch to the PTZ camera for a second. Okay, and you can see that we've got this set up for Teams but this works for Zoom, Google Meets, whatever it is that you would like to do. And I have that camera input coming in. And now I've got, I'm gonna use computer audio and I can join a meeting. So I'm gonna go ahead and join that meeting right now. It's connecting, it's trying to connect. Actually started this meeting a while ago, so let's just try that meeting again. There we go. So I've started my meeting and if there was somebody else there wanting to, uh, to talk with me right now, then they'd be able to connect and we'd be able to chat. And so I would be able to also switch between my inputs. So again, coming back over here, if I wanted to switch to this camera, then I could switch to that camera there. If I wanted to switch to this one, I could do that. If I wanted to show them my computer input, I could do that. And I can switch between different things like that. Okay, all right. 
and I'm getting a little bit of feedback there, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. So we can, we can use that. We can uh, come back over here, I think. So with a device like this, where we're capturing the HDMI output of our switcher, we can take our Zoom calls and our team meetings and make them look a lot professional, more professional with different camera inputs. We've actually had some really good success with that. We have been doing that here in our own office where we have multiple cameras set up and we're doing uh, different events for some of our corporate clients and some of our not-for-profit clients where they're coming into our space and they're setting up and they're doing their events live streaming out from here and we can have multiple cameras and we can switch to different things for them. So it works out, works out quite nicely. So I think that covers most of, what, uh, most of what this system does. But I think that it's important for us to take a look. Let's see here, I'm gonna just jump to, let's take a look and see what this, what this system looks like. So we have down in the bottom here, we have our camera controller. That's connected with a uh, Cat5 connection to the network. Then we have our computer that we use for our presentations. That's connected with HDMI into the video switcher. And we also have that connected to the network so that it can connect to the internet. We then have, going kind of in reverse here, we've got that small camera that's connected wirelessly through the wireless controller and that's then connected with, uh, with SDI. And we have the PTZ camera, which is connected through SDI and controlled with Cat5. We have the, the handheld kind of uh, prosumer or, or pro camera that is coming in with SDI as well. And then from there, uh, we have a network line that's going for, to, the, uh, to the streaming box. And on the output of our switcher, we're switching from SDI to HDMI, converting that so that it can be split. And we're going to our preview monitors. And you can see down in the bottom here, we've got an audio mixer that's feeding into the system. And all of this is again connected with a network line to our internet connection. So the system is not ridiculously difficult and it fits together quite well to, to get us out onto the internet. I've been asked at different times, what does a system like this cost? I can tell you that you know, many of our streaming systems cost somewhere in the area of, uh, you know, they usually start somewhere in the area of about fourteen dollars to $15,000 and then they kind of go up from there. We've got some clients who are doing five and six and seven cameras or more and when you get into that then you're getting past a small switcher like this one and it, and it kind of goes up from there. Uh, Roland actually has some interesting uh, specials on on some of their switchers this month if anybody is interested in taking a look at that. Uh, but a system like this is an investment. It's not something that you're necessarily just going to do for a short period of time. It's something that you are going to typically buy into and then you can build on. So as, as that is the case, some of our clients will say, we don't really need a switcher that is four inputs, but they'll purchase one. They might only go with one camera, one computer input, and to start off with, they go with that. Then other, com uh, other clients are saying, well, we actually need more inputs, so we're going to have four inputs right now, but we want to have more in the future, and then they look at a switcher that's a bit bigger than that. There are some things that are really important to realize about putting together a, a streaming system. And one of them is, is that there are a hundred or more different ways to do it. And not all of those are necessarily perfect or right for every application, but you've got to find the one that's going to be the most reliable for you. And I can tell you that we've got a lot of clients uh, that are you know, not-for-profit groups and they're trying to figure out, well, what can we do that's an inexpensive way of doing this? because they're wanting to be able to, uh, to do it on a shoestring, and I, and I can understand that. Well, you can see that if you wanted to, say, take a webcam, and you wanted to bring that into your computer, it would be difficult to do switching with an external switching device if you are using a webcam, because it doesn't have an HDMI or SDI output, typically. Um, we have some clients who are saying, well, 
you know, we want it to be as simple as possible. We typically find that systems like this, where it has big buttons and buttons that are labeled stream, that kind of thing, it makes it a lot easier for volunteers to be able to run things. And that, that same sort of idea goes in schools, where you can repeat the same thing over and over again and have a system do the same thing. The other thing that we want to make sure that we talk about tonight is that your internet connection is obviously incredibly important. And although there's a lot of information out there on the web that says things like, you know, if you have a five gig upload, then you can upload at 1080p. We would really recommend that you be very cautious of that and careful about how it is that you're setting up your system. Because if there are other people using the system, if there's other people who are connecting to your network in your building, then that can have an impact on things. Test anything that you're doing, test it multiple times. Make sure that you aren't just going into something hoping that it's gonna work. Make sure that your internet connection is solid and that the platform that you're using is solid. There are some situations where we found platforms like YouTube or Facebook or Vimeo or what have you, and we believe that a platform is very stable for one client and then in another situation, for whatever reason, it's not stable for the other client. And they're often coming back to us saying, well, why is that the case? Well, sometimes we don't always know. Sometimes it has to do with where a client is connecting to the internet and where they are connecting to the servers that are uploading to YouTube or the server that is uploading to Vimeo. So I'd really, be, uh, I'd really caution you to try to make sure that you are testing your system and we can certainly help with that. But check to make sure that the upload is working and that you're getting what you expect to get from your system. And I think, you know, one last thing, and it's coming back to the thing I said earlier on, and that is audio. You know, you can overspend on cameras. You, there's lots of people who are happy to send you, sell you a 4K camera. We'll sell you a 4K camera if that's what you want to do. But just be careful because if you really are only streaming at 1080p, most of the people in your school or in your church or in your, who are tuning into your theater program, typically those people are not wanting to stream that download at 4K. They're just not able to do it. Uh, they often will not have the bandwidth and if the kids are playing video games in the other room anyway, they're not gonna be able to get that and all, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, spend the money where you should spend it. Spend the money and, and your focus on the areas that are most important. And in a lot of ways, as much as, you know, almost 40 years ago, Horizon started off as an audio company, today we continue to have to say, audio when it comes to streaming is often more important than what your video quality is like. People will turn off your stream if they can't understand what's going on, if they can't hear it, but they're more likely to stick with it if the video is maybe not quite as good, but the audio is good, okay? I, I know that there's people who are watching this who are saying, that's not true, and that's okay, go ahead and send me an email and we can talk about it or call me. Uh, but I think that as a rule of thumb, try to make sure that you spend the time on getting your sound, sound good, okay? Well, we've covered a lot in a fairly short period of time tonight. If you've got any questions for us, if you would like to, uh, to talk about how something like this might, might work for you, or if you look at it and say, well, yeah, that's very nice, but my situation is a little bit different. I want to try this instead. Or can you tell me more about how I might be able to use software like OBS with a system like this? Absolutely. We're happy to talk about that. Uh, if you would like to know more about any of this or whatever other ideas that you might have, uh, for streaming, then let us know. We've seen a lot of different things. I'm not gonna tell you we've seen everything, but we have seen a lot of different things. We've helped a lot of different corporate clients and, uh, and not-for-profit clients, church clients over the last while, and we'd like to be able to work with you too. Thank you very much. I hope that, uh, that this was helpful tonight, and I hope that you have a good evening.